Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Jijo from Northwestern University. Uh, the title of this work is Assignments in Global Spectrum Management. This is a joint work with my advisor, Professor Domingo. So the motivation of this work is to deal with, is to deal with the challenge of mobile data traffic explosion. As we all know that the mobile data traffic is increasing exponentially every year. So to deal with that, one way is to explore more spectrum, including the traditional cellular bands, as well as the millimeter wave bands. Another way is to deploy more cells to further improve the spectral efficiency and coverage. And the third way is to design more effective and efficient resource allocation scheme. So here, resource allocation scheme means includes spectral allocation, user association, uh, scheduling, as well as power allocation. So in our work, our main focus is on spectral allocation and the user association. So let's first uh, review some conventional allocation schemes. So as we all know in current cellular LT systems, full, full frequency reuse is implemented in the current system. That is, every cell reuses the entire band. <coughs> and the interference, and the intercell interference is done by doing some ICIC techniques or, or like uh, almost blank suffering technique. And the second one is the partial frequency reuse that is for interference limited network. So in this case, uh, adjacent cells tend to orthogonal use orthogonalized spectrum, and the cells that are far away from each other tend to use the same part of the spectrum. And the third one is called a fractional frequency reuse. So this one is reasonably proposed to further improve the cell edge user experience. But if we look at these three spectral allocation schemes, so they either underutilize or overutilize the spectrum, causing performance degradation. Moreover, none of them is traffic aware. That is, they're not adaptive to users' traffic load. And also for user association scheme, so currently <coughs> the most uh, famous one is done based on the strongest receive signal. However, by doing that in the HATNET, this will shift most of the traffic loads to the macro cell, which has the longer uh, coverage. So an option is to add a bias to offload users from macro cell to pico cells. And also in some Wi-Fi systems, user association is done by capping the maximum number of users that an access point may associate with. However, for all these user association schemes, we see all of them are done in a distributed manner. And uh, moreover, they are far from optimal. So in our work, we propose a centralized slow time scale resource management scheme for a very large metropolitan area, uh, let's say a network consisting of thousands of APs and the users. And in our work, we allow fully flexible user association and spectrum allocation, uh, as I will explain in the following slides. And in our numerical results and the simulation results, we showed significant gains in terms of delay and throughput over existing conventional schemes. OK, so let's first take a look at this toy model. This is a very small network um, with three APs and the two users. And each user has different traffic load. Let, us denote, let this lambda denote the traffic load or the packet arrival rate of each user. So here we allow flexible user association, which means every user can potentially be served by any AP in the network. And also we allow a user being served by multiple APs. So for spectral allocation, let us first see some uh, conventional schemes. So given a limited, a certain amount of bandwidth, one way we can assign part of the spectrum to AP1 to serve user 1. And the second part of the spectrum exclusively to AP2. And the AP2 further divide them, one part to serve user 1 and another part to serve user 2. And the rest of the resource can be assigned to AP3 to serve user 2. So in this case, so this kind of orthogonal spectrum reuse applies to a, a interference limited case where the interference is pretty strong, so we need to orthogonalize the spectrum assigned to, assigned to each link. Another 
case is the full spectrum reuse. So in this case, AP1 can, be, can use the entire bandwidth to serve user 1. And to avoid interference, AP2 does nothing. And AP3 reuses the entire bandwidth to serve user 2. So this applies to the case when the traffic load of user 1 and user 2 are quite are relatively low. And, and also, the interference from link AP1 to user 2 is pretty, is pretty low. However, in our work, we try to allow flexible, fully flexible spectrum allocation. <coughs> so let me illustrate this. So for, still for this limited certain amount of bandwidth, we can assign first part exclusively to AP1, and the second part to AP2, and third part to AP3. And the fourth part shared, a, a shared among AP1 and AP2. So it means AP1 and AP2 can both simultaneously access this part of spectrum. And of course, they will interfere with each other. And uh, similarly, the fifth part is shared by AP2 and 3. The sixth part is shared by AP1 and AP3. And the last part is shared among all the APs. So by doing this, we see we partition the entire bandwidth into seven pieces. And I'd like to call every distinct piece as a pattern. So each pattern is distinct because it reflects a distinct interference condition. So for example, let's take a look at the first pattern and the fourth pattern for AP1. So this, if we look at the spectral efficiency of AP1 under the first pattern and uh, the spectral efficiency of AP1 under the fourth pattern, it is obvious that the spectral efficiency of AP1 under the first pattern should be, should be higher because it, in this part pattern, actually it is assigned exclusive, exclusively the bandwidth. So there is no interference. OK, so by doing that, let, let, us, let me introduce uh, bandwidth allocation variable y to, de to denote the bandwidth allocated, allocated to each pattern. So the superscript here indicates the pattern. And uh, of course, here we have seven such y variables. And if we sum up, and they sum up to the t entire bandwidth. So based on that, we can further divide the spectrum allocated to each pattern to serve every user. So this shows an example. So in this case, the bandwidth allocated to each pattern is further divided to several pieces to serve each user. And therefore, we introduce another W variable for the bandwidth allocated to serve every user under each pattern. For example, the first one, this W13121. So the superscript here is the pattern. So this, par this, part, of, this part of spectrum is shared by AP1 and AP3. And the superscript 121 here is, means that this this bandwidth is allocated to AP1 to serve user 1. So based on that, if we want to calculate the rate of user 1, we just need to look at every proper block. And for each block, the rate contributed to uh, its contributing rate can be calculated by multiplying this bandwidth W with the spectrum efficiency of the link under this pattern. Then we just need to sum up over all proper block to get the rate of user 1. So based on this model, we can have a basic formulation to maximize the network utility function. So here, this u is the total network utility function, which is a function of the rate vector of all users. And uh, here are all the constraints I just mentioned before. So there are several properties of this basic formulation. First, this problem is a convex optimization problem as long as the network utility function is concave in the rate vector, which is often the case because uh, for many network utility functions like uh, sum rate and weighted sum rate, as well as average packet delay, they are all concave in the rate vector. So if it is the case, then this problem can be easily solved using some standard convex optimization tool. However, if we count the total number of variables in this problem, we see that it actually increases exponentially in the number of APs in the network. So, so here, k is the number of users, and the n is the number of APs. Therefore, this problem becomes computationally infeasible for even medium-scale network, say, with 100 APs. 
we cannot solve this problem. Therefore, we aim to get a scalable solution and with performance guarantee to solve this problem. So luckily, we proved that for this problem, there exists an optimal solution which only activates at most k patterns. So that is to say, although we have two to the power of n patterns, actually, as, as long as we are lucky enough to find k good patterns, and by optimally allocating bandwidth to these k good patterns, we can still achieve the global optimum. But the problem is how to find these k good patterns. So motivated by this, first we propose a user-centric model to reduce the number of variables. So in a very large network, we observe the fact that actually a user can be potentially served by a small uh, by, by a small number of APs in the network. Because for APs that are really far away from that user, it's received SNR at that user is already below the noise level. So it is meaningless to consider the, the link for that AP to this UE. Therefore, for every UE, we call the set of APs who can potentially serve it as the neighborhood of it. And we denote NJ as the neighborhood of user J. Secondly, since only APs in, in, in user J's neighborhood can potentially serve user J, so user J treats all APs outside its neighborhood as stationary noise sources. And as I mentioned before, it is reasonable to assume that the size of every neighborhood is upper bounded by a constant number. So then based on that, if we look at the spectral efficiency of link API to user J, that only depends on the activities of APs in user J's neighborhood. And previously, when we, count the, when we calculate the rate of user J, we need to sum up over all the patterns and all the, U and all the APs. But now, we only need to consider the APs in user J's neighborhood. And we also need to consider the local patterns instead of the global patterns. Therefore, we introduce this local variable X to replace the global variable W. And if we count the total number of this X variable, it is actually bounded by a number which, which is linear in K. So based on this feature, we reformulate the original problem to a mixed integer programming. So to save time, I, I don't want to dig, in, dig deep into this problem formulation, but the basic idea is that first, we replace the we replace the global allocation variable w with this local allocation variable x, and we also add an indicator variable d to indicate each whether each local pattern is used or not, and we also add several local consistency constraints to make this problem equivalent to the original one. Okay, so based on that, we see that this new mixed integer programming has totally about k square variables. So the number of variables is significantly reduced. But for a network with a thousand users, this problem still has about a million variables, which is still computationally infeasible. Moreover, since it is a mixed integer programming, it's very hard to obtain a local optimal, not to mention the global optimal. Therefore, we need to further explore the hidden structure of our problem. So luckily, we proved that Actually, for this mixed integer programming, as long as the objective function is an affine function, then a single pattern achieves the optimal. So the proof of this proposition is very intuitive because as long as the network utility function is an affine function, then we just need to shift all the resources to the, to the pattern which mostly maximize the utility. So based on that, we know as long as the utility function is an affine function, then we can convert the mixed integer programming to a binary linear program with only, k with only about k variables, like the, like the optimization problem below. We see all the variables are binary, either 0 or 1, and every constraint and utility are linear. And because of the sparsity of this problem, actually uh, it can be efficiently solved using some standard uh, BRP tool, such like branch and bound and branch and cut. So this problem can be, as also will be shown in the numerical results, this BRP problem can be solved within a reasonably small amount of time. Okay, so 
Based on these facts, we designed our pattern pursuit algorithm to solve the original problem for a very large network. So, rem so just remind that we, we only actually need to find k good patterns out of 2 to the power of n patterns and by optimally allocating bandwidth to these k patterns, we can still achieve the optimal. Therefore, in this pattern pursuit algorithm, at each iteration, instead of maximizing the utility function, we maximize the first order approximation of it, which is an affine function. Then, based on the proposition I mentioned before, we can, we can convert the mixed integer programming to a BRP, and uh, after solving a BRP, we obtain a good pattern. That is to say, at every iteration, we are obtaining a new good pattern. And then we add it to a so-called candidate pattern set. Then we optimally assign bandwidth to, to the patterns in the candidate pattern set to optimize the utility function. So it is even possible after k iterations, we can achieve the global optimal. And, uh, and also, this iterative algorithm terminates when this kind of, I call distinct, uh, distan distance vector is less than epsilon. So this epsilon is a precise threshold. And because of that, another good feature of this algorithm is that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer k such that at the case iteration, we are at most epsilon away from the global optimum. And uh, the proof of it is, is quite simple. So let me illustrate it using this two-dimensional graph. So suppose this blue curve is the utility function, and uh, this x star is the optimal value. And suppose we're at the tth iteration. So, so we first try to maximize maximize the linear approximation of the utility function here, so which is the red line, and uh, suppose we get this x, then using the distinct, uh, uh, using the distance vector, we can calculate this distance. And we see this distance is actually always an upper bound of the optimality gap here. Therefore, actually after each iteration, we can always get an upper bound of the optimality gap. So after every iteration, we always know how far we are from the optimal. And when, when the algorithm terminates, we, we know that our optimality gap is always smaller than this precise threshold epsilon. So in numerical results, we compare our scheme with several baseline schemes. The first one is using full spectrum reuse, and the user association is determined based on maximum received power. And the second one is full spectrum reuse, and the user association is optimized for the utility. And the third one is the coloring algorithm proposed in our previous work. And the fourth one is the theoretical lower bound of the optimum, global optimum, obtained through our algorithm. Because as I said, after each iteration, we can, we can obtain an upper bound of the optimality gap. So when the algorithm terminates, we can still get an get a lower bound of the optimum. So first, this plots the results for median scale network with 100 APs and the 200 UEs. So we see in this median scale network, uh, these APs and the UEs are randomly deployed in this area, and the users are labeled as these blue, blue stars. Then this figure plots the, the utility function versus the average packet delay, or average, average traffic load. So in this numerical results, we set the utility function as the average packet delay of each user, which is actually a concave function in the rate vector. So in this figure, we see that our proposed algorithm, the blue curve, outperforms other three baseline schemes in terms of delay, and also uh, we see uh, uh, these three baseline schemes cannot st stabilize the system when the traffic load increases to 3, 5, and 7. But our proposed algorithm can still stabilize the system when the traffic load is about 11 packet per second per user. Therefore, our proposed scheme also achieves the maximum throughput region. And if we see the pink curve, which is the lower bound of the global optimum, we know that our, our solution gives a very near optimal solution. 
And then we also, this figure plots the numerical result for an even larger scale network with 1,000 APs and 2,500 UEs. So this figure shows a similar trend that our proposed scheme outperforms the baseline schemes in terms of delay and throughput region. So let us show this, the specific actual uh, spectrum allocation and user association. So this figure is the deployment for a very large network with 1,000 APs and 2,500 UEs. Here users are labeled as blue stars, and we see these black, uh, black segments joining an AP and a, a blue star means the user association of each uh, AP and UE. So because this graph is too big, so if we want to see the actual spectrum allocation, we need to zoom into some small area. So let's just zoom into this red, red rectangle area to see the spectrum allocation. So in this area, actually there are about 12 APs and 31 UEs. And uh, the figure above shows the user association in this red rectangle area. And and here for the red number, the first, so the red number is the index for each AP, and the, the first blue number is the index for each UE, and the second blue number indicates the traffic load of each UE. And the figure below shows the spectrum allocation for this small rectangle area. And so the x-axis is the entire bandwidth, and we have 12 rows showing the spectrum allocation for 12 APs. So in this case, so this is similar to the graph uh, I just showed in the toy model. So from this figure, we see the solution obtained by running our algorithm gives this spectrum allocation, which trying to orthogonalize the spectrum allocated to links that are near nearby and try to reuse as, mo as much as spectrum as possible for links that are far away from each other. And also for those and also those users with high traffic load are more likely to be assigned with more spectrum. And also we, we build a packet level simulator to validate our result in terms of the average packet delay. And uh, we see it, it shows the similar trend compared to our theoretical results. So in conclusion, we study a centralized slow time scale spectrum management for a very large metropolitan area networks. And we propose um, a user-centric reformulation and a pattern pursuit algorithm with performance guarantee. And our numerical results show significant gains in terms of delay and throughput. And our future work includes a joint power control and the spectrum allocation, as well as fast time scale resource allocation for such large scale networks. Okay, I think that's all.